Okay, hey guys. So um, as you know, we I have been playing around with uh, using Osculator uh, to interpret incoming data from this cool MIDI mate that I got from a friend of mine. Uh, so the other day we set up some CCs that we can use in Ableton as triggers. Uh, and then I've been playing around with OSC routing to various objects. We were able to get the ETC ion desk to respond to some commands. So we've got a couple in here built, uh, go and stop, which will cycle through queues. Um, and then up top, um, I made some cues for the do show profile at Cornerstone. And you can see I've only got a few here that are actually going to channel 16. We've decided that channel 16 will be the, the response channel on that desk. What's interesting is that you can control the desk via MIDI with program changes to uh, recall um, snapshots one-to-one, -one, which is a little bit limiting um, unless you take into consideration events. So for instance, I made a snapshot uh, number one that literally scoped nothing. Um, and then I made an event that, when that snapshot is recalled, activated the tap tempo. Um, so you can do that sort of as a workaround for various kinds of sequences and events and things uh, on the, the venue system. A little bit wonky, but it does work. Um, anyway, so I've reserved sort of all of these channels here in um, uh, Osculator for uh, those controls. We've got a bunch of free ones here and I'm gonna be mapping some of these other things to X32 uh, uh, commands like Q recall for various scenes and things. But today what I wanna talk about is an alternate means of sending OSC messages. So we just got uh, Max for Live uh, and one of the things that you can download in Max for Live is um, this, uh, let's see here connection kit. And it comes with a bunch of devices. You can control Arduino stuff and um, all kinds of video things and you can do Lego Mindstorms uh, control with it as well as some MIDI things. Uh, Touch OSC also works with it. A little bit irrelevant with, uh, with Touchable. Um, but what I was really interested in was this OSC send. And this allows me to map uh, things to send out OSC messages to various things that you want to control with OSC. Um, and where this gets really cool is that now I can send values. So in this case, I'm sending out channel 1 and channel 2 fader values uh, that are mapped to this macro 1 and macro 2 thing. And I'll show you what that does in just a second. Uh, but I can do those those things over time because able time, Ableton works in the time domain. Um, and cooler than that is that we can lock these uh, various interactions to, uh, to uh, musical time. So we can make these things happen, for instance, uh, over a four bar period, over a six bar period, whatever you want to do. Um, now with the X32, Obviously, some fader things would be very useful if you're wanting to do like fade in, fade out, um, uh, delay swells, those types of things. And um, alternatively, uh, you can do things like filter sweeps um, over time, which was not really easy to do uh, on deck with the X32 because of the, the other things that you're, you're needing to control at the same time, um, typically in a show. So. And the pots aren't really great on the uh, on the control surface, so uh, it, it's it's much nicer to be able to do these things uh, when they're locked to a musical timing. So very cool. We can adjust our tempo here. We can tap it in. Uh, we can do it manually. I've got this tap uh, actually mapped to a button on my uh, MIDI Mate. Uh, it's on a different bank, so I'll just tap in there. But for for giggles, we'll just leave it 120 for now. So what I've done. Um, and we can actually do this all in one channel, but I just wanted to have a couple of channels to uh, kind of splay this out so we can kind of see what's happening here. What I've done is I've created a MIDI clip, and the MIDI clip doesn't actually have anything in it. It's just a dummy MIDI clip. Um, we've got bar 1 through bar 8 that is currently selected, and if you see under this envelope section here, uh, you can activate this by coming over to here to this E, you can see that um, I've created an instrument rack, and what that means is that on this channel, 
I've got a couple of things. Now these aren't actually doing anything, uh, but what it does allow me to do is have these macro knobs, which are then mappable to th these parameters here. So you'll see that these macro knobs are actually controlling uh, these fader levels via um, some clip automation. And here's how we do that. We can come in here to this envelope. We can come over here to this instrument rack uh, section, and we can come over here to, for instance, in this case, chance. Um, and so, oops, uh, we're going to make ourselves a nice, smooth transition. So we're going to come to zero, um, and note that 75% is going to act to be actually unity. Uh, all the way 100% is going to be plus 10 on X32. So just, just make a note of that. You don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to make this go all the way up. And there's my, uh, that's, that's zero. That's, that's actually quite a bit louder than zero. Um, and then, so that's fader one. Um, I could have done that on the same, uh, the same channel, but just, just for giggles, I'm going to show you in this other clip here. And here's fader two. Um, we basically did the, did the same thing. So uh, this is going to be, in this case, scale. All it's really doing is it's, it's, it's uh, moving one of these uh, thingies that is moving one of these macro knobs, which is then being mapped to this thing here. And I'll show you what that means when we hit play. Um, so for instance, I'm going to hit play here. And it's going to wait for, uh, it's going to have a one bar wait. You can see this chance knob is now moving. Um, same thing here. So there's fader two. And you can see if we come over here, we can watch as those values are going up and down on this uh, OSC message bit here. Uh, and cooler than that, uh, oh, before we go any further, um, again, you do have to have your host targeted. So in this case, that's the IP for my X32 port 10023. Uh, interesting to note, for whatever reason, this information here does not save when you close the session. So you will have to re-enter that information when you reopen your session, which is a little bit screwy. Um, I'm going to do a little forum troll to see if there's a workaround for that. Uh, I, I find that to be terribly inconvenient. It should be able to be saved uh, within the session, so you don't have to do that every time. So check this out. Um, I have just mapped both of these guys to scene one. Uh, let's come over here to X32. And uh, I've actually got um, this mapped to a button on my MIDI mate. So we'll watch. Uh, let's see, we can, if I hit this, Ableton is, is going now. Cool. I don't have a stop mapped yet, so we'll just kill that. Um, and let's come over here to X32 edit. And we'll kill these faders for a second and watch what happens when we hit um, this go button in Ableton. Bam. We are actively doing time-based automation on X32 uh, using clip automation from Ableton, uh, which is now sending out OSC messages to my X32. So, uh, Paul. Uh, there's my workaround. Anyway, uh, I hope this has been somewhat useful for you, and it'll uh, be interesting to see what other people do with this in the future. Cheers.